Hello everyone, welcome back. As you can see, I'm playing Destiny, and today I'm going to be showing off some of the Warlock's powers. Now, I'm going to be doing a little bit differently from my other videos. Normally, I would do this in a Let's Play format, but today I'm just going to go through the abilities, and then I'll have some overlaid gameplay in the corner showing you all the stuff that I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and jump in now. For starters, here's my Warlock. As I said, I was going to wait until he gets to level 20, but he is actually at level 21 now due to the light, so that's pretty cool. I have some sweet armor here, 666. <laughs> Get out of here. Alright, now let's go check the Void Walker. As you will see, I have all the grenades unlocked here. First, we'll start off with the Vortex Grenade, which there should be a video overlaying right now showing what it is. Basically, it's the standard grenade for the Void Walker, and I'm not too much of a fan of it. It has very good, like, burst potential for that one area, but it's in competitive play, like in the Crucible, it's just not as good as the other ones. So I don't really use it very often. It's good for a first grenade, but it's not that great in my opinion. And then down here you have the Scatter Grenade, which is actually my favorite Void Walker grenade. It's really effective. It's one of those impact grenades that explodes on impact, but it also explodes into little grenades as well. So as you can see in the little clip, it is very damaging. It will clear a room instantly. It's pretty damn powerful. And what I like using it for in the multiplayer is you can burst down someone's health really easily and then just finish them off with your gun or melee, whatever you want to use. So it's definitely very good in competitive play. And then down here you have the Axion Bolt. I think that's how you pronounce that. I would compare it to the grenade, the second grenade for the Sunsinger, just based on how it's used. But I don't really like it nearly as much as the Cluster Grenade, so I don't use it as often. It's very powerful as you can see, but I just don't like it as much. I don't know why. I think what it is, is it does like an outward explosion, then it comes in. And I don't think the outward explosion does any damage, but it shoots out little orbs at the enemies, and that's what does the damage. And then over here you have Glide, which is just floating, so you don't really need to see what that is. Then I'll skip over the superpower and go straight to Energy Drain. This one is really effective because not only is it powerful when it hits them, but it drains their energy and it reduces the cooldown for your grenade. And it also, as the effect I have down here, Surge, it gives you increased weapon and movement speed. Which means when you reload your weapon it's faster, and when you're walking around you can walk faster. I don't know if that means that your weapon fire rate is increased as well. I definitely know it's for the reload speed. And over here you start having the customizable ones. Like this one it says training focused on battle recovery and speed. As you see up there in the top it'll take down certain attributes and put them up. This one I have battle recovery and toughness because I think those are more important. And then this one is toughness and speed. So I'm probably going to keep this one even if I unlock the ones down here. So yeah, I'm definitely going to be sticking for the middle one. And then over here you have increased the size of explosions created by the Nova Bomb. And then you have this one that tracks enemies. Personally, I think it's more important to have an increased size of the explosion for the Nova Bomb and your grenades, because it's a lot better for taking down hordes of enemies. I don't know if tracking an enemy would be that important. If you just aim it properly, it'll get the job done anyway. Then you have the Hunger. Increase the duration of energy drain effect. Still not as good as the Annihilate, so I'll probably stick with this one the entire time. I mean, it's good for one-on-one, -on -one, but when you're in crowds, you definitely want that extra explosion radius. Then you have the Ancestral Order, training focused on all attributes. It basically gives you a boost for everything. And then this one is raw speed. It takes down everything else, but it gives you a ton of speed boost. And then you have Toughness at All Costs, which puts up a lot of your armor, but cuts everything. Agility really gets a huge cut, as you can see there. It goes down to almost nothing. So if you want to be slow and have a lot of armor, this one's good. But just keep in mind how much you're cutting off the agility. Then up here you have Vortex Mastery. Increases the range of Axion Bolt Seekers and the duration of the Vortex effect of Nova Bomb and the Vortex Grenade. Since I don't use the Vortex Grenade, I don't really like this one. And since I don't use the Axion Bolts, I don't like it either, since I use the Cluster. But I do have Bloom, which is enemies killed by any of your abilities explode. So you can hit them with the Energy Drain, or a Grenade, or the Nova Bomb, any of that, and they'll explode. Which, since you already have explosions going off, it just adds more explosions. So, I mean, how can that be bad? And then you have down here, Embrace the Void. Damaging enemies with Nova Bomb or any grenade triggers the energy drain effect, which is really good because normally you would have to wait until your melee recharges. This way, you have the bomb or grenade that can also give you the energy drain. So you'll be really damn fast. If you're focusing on agility, I would highly recommend using Embrace the Void because it just makes you even faster. And even if you don't go into agility, it'll give you that nice speed boost. If you want to, for say, do this one right here where it gives you a ton of armor and no agility you'll be able to use this to kind of counteract it. So there's that kind of way that'll help you balance it out. And then, finally, you have the Nova Bomb, which is really amazing. That's why I like using the Void Walker for the Warlock, just for the Nova Bomb. 
it is so good at clearing out enemies. And in the Crucible, which is the multiplayer mode, <laughs> insanely good. The Titan has to actually jump into the group to use the disintegration effect. The Nova Bomb, you can go from a distance just sling it in there. So it's the same power with a whole lot more range. So it's definitely my favorite to use. And then you have Nova Bomb creates a Vortex, which I have enabled right now. And then Nova Bomb splits into three. I don't think I'll add this one. I think I'm just going to stick with this. And then you have Lance, which is Nova Bomb travels farther and faster. Still not as good as the Vortex that it creates, so I'll probably just stick with this one. And then you have Life Seal, which makes Energy Drain restore a lot of your health as well. And this one right here, it might be a little better than the weapon and movement speed if you're really being hurt by the enemies, because then you'll be able to get your health back. Or if you prefer movement speed, like if you had the agility tree right here, then you'll most likely want to use this one. But when I unlock this, I'll probably switch to lifesteal. And then down here you have soul RIP. Killing enemy with energy drain reduces the cooldown of Nova Bomb. Which is really good, because you want to get that Nova Bomb out as quickly as possible. Then you have the glide abilities over here. The final one is blink, where you can teleport instead of gliding. Which I kind of like the glide, so I don't know if I'll be able to trade it for the blink. Alright, now let's go over to the Sunsinger, which is the offensive class. Right here you have Solar Grenade, which is just like the Vortex, but it's not that great. Since I don't like the Vortex, I most likely won't like the Solar Grenade anyway. And down here is the Firebolt Grenade, which I actually really love using. It's kind of like the third grenade for the Void Walker, but I like it because it actually damages them when the Shockwave comes back in. It damages them when you hit them with the grenade initially, and when the Shockwave falls in. So it's a lot better in my opinion. This one, unfortunately, I don't have unlocked right now. But as you can see, an explosive grenade that causes bonus damage when attached to its target. So it's essentially like a sticky grenade. Then over here, you have Glide, just like the other one. I think he also... No, he does not have Blink, so Sunsinger only has Glide. And then instead of the Energy Drain, you have Scorch, which is a melee attack that ignites enemies causing damage, as you see up on the screen right now. And I have Flame Shield, which damages the enemy, reduces incoming damage for a short time. It doesn't actually reduce the damage, it just gives you a shield, and when that shield is dispensed, then you take normal damage again. They kind of word that weirdly, so I don't know why they do that. They should just say that it gives you a little bit of a shield. Even though it's in the title, it says it reduces damage, which is not entirely true. Then over here, you have essentially the same thing. Toughness at all costs, you have the agility and all that kind of stuff. But right here is where it differs. You have Radiant Will, increase the duration of Radiance, which is really good. That's his special effect, which I'll get to when I scroll back at the end. But this one I like a lot better. Enemies you ignite burn longer and take more damage. That is really good when you're playing on the Crucible. That means you can melee somebody and just let them go, because they're probably going to die from that. It's pretty effective. Then you have Sunburst. Killing an enemy with Scorch has a chance to generate Orbs of Light. I still don't really know what Orbs of Light are. I know there are some abilities that give you health every time you get an Orb of Light. And if you see an Orb of Light on the ground, it takes off the cooldown for your special ability, like the Nova Bomb. But I don't know what other effect it has outside of that. And then as you can see with this tree, it's a lot like the Void Walker as well. So there's no need to really go over it. And then right here you have an ability that's really good. All grenades ignite enemies, causing damage over time. So you have this ignite, and then you have the other one that makes them burn longer and worse. So as you can see, he has a lot of burn potential, which is really damaging. Then over here, aiming your weapon while in the air will hold you in place for a short time. That is really cool, and I will want to use that once I unlock it. It will be a little tough giving this up, but I like the idea of being in midair and being able to shoot. That sounds really effective. And then down here you have Gift of the Sun, gain an additional grenade. Also, very effective. It's going to be really tough, because for the Void Walker, the skills over here, they're kind of easy to pick one or the other, depending on your playset. These all sound really good, so it's kind of hard to pick in between them. If I had to say, it would probably be Gift of the Sun or Touch of Flame. But yeah, they're really hard to choose. Then over here you have Solar Wind, hitting an enemy with Scorch knocks them back. I don't think that's as good as getting an Overshield, so I don't use that or I can't use it yet, but when I unlock it, I'm pretty sure I won't use it. Then you have Brimstone. Killing enemies with Scorch causes them to explode. Kind of effective, but I would rather have the overshield that you get. Because making them explode, if you're doing one-on-one -on -one, like you usually are in the Crucible, it's not very effective because they're already dead, so you don't really need them to explode. Then you have Focus Burst. Upgrade Glide to provide an initial boost of speed. Then Balance Glide, Upgrade Glide to provide bonuses to both speed and control. So as you can see, he has a lot to do with flying. He doesn't have any of the blink kind of abilities. And then over here, you have Radiance, which is his special ability. As you can see, I have him jumping in the air, which I think, I don't know, I don't know if this is true or not. But when you use it on the ground, I'm pretty sure it takes longer for the animation to finish. If you jump in the air, I know this for a fact, if you jump in the air, you're able to move faster and further because you're obviously in the air and floating and not walking. 
But I think the startup time is actually shorter if you're in the air. I don't know if that's true or not, but I think the animation finishes quicker. So I always like to jump in the air just to get an extra boost. And then you have Song of Flame. While active, Radiance reduces all cooldowns for nearby allies, which is pretty effective if you want to be a team player, but I would much rather have Radiance Skin, which is while active, Radiance reduces incoming damage. That is a lot better. I like the idea of this, but I'm not too much of a team player. I'm usually a lone wolf. So I'm either playing on my own, or even if I'm in a team fight, it's probably better to have this, so you can just be a tank and go in there. And then you have the final ability, which is Fireborn. Radiance can now be activated from beyond the grave. Doing so returns you to life, which is really good if you're doing a mission by yourself and you don't want it to end. But I like Radiant Skin, so it's going to be a toss-up between these two. Since they're both really good, I don't know. It's going to be tough picking between these two. Alright, so that is the Warlock class. The next class I'll be doing is most likely going to be the Titan, since that's the one I played in the beta. As you can see my emblem up there, that's for playing on the moon during the beta. I have still, in the beta and the main game, I have yet to play the Hunter, so that's going to be interesting playing as that one for the first time. And you can most likely expect the Titan video to be in two or three days. I need to get them to at least level 15 before I do the Crucible video, and then level 20 or higher before I do the Synopsis, the one that I had right now with the Warlock. So yeah, you can expect those pretty soon. I'm pretty sure tomorrow, after this video comes out, I'm pretty sure that day I'm going to be streaming some Titan gameplay on Twitch. So if you want to check that out, you can see me grinding some levels. Alright, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.